Hell yeah, what's up guys? It's Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I got some more heartbeat moments and I want to go into a video that was recently published by vidIQ and in it, they break down basically how much money you can expect to make per thousand views. And from there, he goes in and describes the various niches, the things that impact how much you earn in terms of location, uh, niches, the eight minute rule, all of these different things. He's going to break it down and we're going to go through all of it. So join me on this one. Let's click in h.ki. If you're following along, sign up, do your thing. Let's go. All right. So if you want to follow along with me, you can go to h.ki. I'm in my heartbeat and these are my moments. I just clicked on moments and here we go. So let's click on the first moment, which starts at 11 seconds, where he talks about RPM is not always niche dependent. This is very interesting. For example, how much money you make doesn't always depend on your niche. This is a video from our channel, which is all about YouTube education, and it has an RPM of $3.38. This is also a video from our channel, but it has an RPM of $16.44. That is literally nearly five times as much for that one video per thousand views than the other. Let's, let's hear his analysis here. It's the same channel, the same month five times the RPM. So yeah. how is all of this possible? In a minute, I'll tell you all of the things that affect YouTube revenue, how much real channels are making in different niches, and how to boost your potential YouTube income. But first, an important YouTube fundamental. All right, so he's going to do a whole bunch of weird stuff here, but let's kick forward, and he's going to talk about RPM versus CPM, and they are not the same. RPM is not to be confused with its close relative CPM. Yeah. While CPM, or cost per 1,000 views, refers to the cost advertisers pay on ad revenue, RPM, or revenue per 1,000 views, includes all monetization sources. Ad right, so yeah, and they are not even close, so just keep that in mind. Uh, re YouTube, I believe, or Google takes 45% at a minimum. Channel membership, super chats, and YouTube premium yeah. revenue. In a nutshell, CPM estimates what advertisers are paying, while RPM estimates what the creators take home pay is after YouTube's cut. This it's kind of like the Google YouTube tax, and it is rough. So there you go, guys. That's the one thing I wanted to share with you. There's a very important difference between CPM and RPM. Now, let's get into the next important point we covers, which is, what well, location. You'll see. Big Macs. <laughs> Bear with me on this one. Imagine strolling into a McDonald's in New York, Tokyo, or Delhi, craving that iconic Big Mac. Surprisingly, you'll find the price as varied as the cities themselves. This global price difference isn't random. It mirrors the economic landscape, cost of living, and local purchasing power of each locale. On the There you go. So a, v a view in New York from somebody in New York is not the same as a view in... Vancouver, Canada, where I am, versus Pakistan, versus any other country. Every location is worth a different amount based on those three factors, which he just elaborated on. He's going to go ahead and talk about advertisers paying more in big locations. Let's skip forward to that moment. That means advertisers are much more willing to pay top dollar to grab a spot on your video, much like a pricier Big Mac. Budgets swell in markets with potential, driving up your CPM and ultimately RPM. Contrast this with quieter economic landscapes where company wallets might not be as thick. Reflect. Now this may seem unfair and to some degree it probably is, but consider the fact that you know, to live in New York, at least traditionally, you had to earn like double or triple what you would earn if you lived in a small town city because everything there is just so much more expensive. So in a lot of ways, you know, it just sort of follows the trend uh, that, you know, everything costs more there, everything, you know, earns more there. So just keep that in the back of your head. We're going to skip forward now, and he's going to talk about another very important point, which is video length. And he's not, and he's going to give you examples, and he's also going to talk about the eight-minute rule. So let's click into that here. Video length. Did you spot the difference earlier on? Yeah. Same niche, yeah. same channel, same month, but a massive difference in video length. Now, there is a somewhat tricky YouTube equation to navigate here, where your video should be as long as possible, but also as short as necessary. The long... So that's kind of like the uh, Einstein uh, quote, uh, everything, make it as simple as possible, but not simpler, <laughs> or something like that. I'm, I'm not good with my quotes off the top of my head, 
But there you go. Your video should be as long as possible and as short as necessary. And that is great advice. Let's keep going a little bit here. He's got a lot more to say. Longer it is, the more watch time you can get, therefore the more money you can make. But longer also means it's harder to keep viewers' attention. Also true, and I can attest to this myself. This is big time true. So if you're going to make a long video, make it as interesting as humanly possible. All right, let's skip forward here. He's going to talk about the eight-minute rule, and I actually didn't know this before I started watching this. So check this out. This is where the magic number eight comes into play. YouTube lets you add more ads if your video is longer than eight minutes. If you jump into the YouTube studio, then to monetization, you'll see this option called mid-roll ads, where you can, if you wish, manually place more ads throughout your video. In this example, I placed three manual ad spots, which theoretically means I've just increased my potential revenue from that one video. And you've also potentially really annoyed your viewer if you're dropping all these damn ads in at places where you just, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. We've all seen it, guys, right where they're going to get to the, the big reveal and then bang, ad. TV used to do this a lot. Let's keep going. But in reality, it doesn't mean that all of these ads will be shown to viewers. And if you try to abuse the system, YouTube will just laugh in your face. When I tried it on this video, revenue simply went down. So, yeah. Serve you right, bro. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. So there you go. Any minute, any video now over eight minutes, you could add these in. I remember last year, or a couple years ago, when the ten minute was like that magic number, and every video was ten minutes and like one second long. And if you know, to be ironic, my last video I made was seven minutes and forty-seven seconds. So I should have held out for that eight-minute money, but I didn't. Damn it. Anyways, let's skip forward here where he talks about the different niches and RPMs and how they vet. Not only do they vary by niche, but how there are also some really big exceptions. RPMs and niches. And yes, they do play a big part. So right here in this column is my RPM. And honestly, compared to other channels, from what I've seen, it looks like it's pretty low. I don't really know the reason as to why. Maybe it's because I don't make finance videos. I know those have like a pretty high RPM. True. Rebecca Joy is pretty much spot on here. Her niche does somewhat dictate her RPM. As a lifestyle channel, it's a pretty broad topic with a wide audience appeal. It's more likely to be a younger demographic too, which means less disposable income. Keep that in mind. So if you're playing video games for, you know, younger people, as an example, your RPM won't be the same as if you're making videos about, you know, financial decisions for, you know, people that are in, you know, like moving to Florida in when you're in your 60s and stuff like that. Like totally different markets and uh, each has a lot of different, uh, uh, a different amount of money in the bank. All of that is not as bad as the couch GM over in the sports niche who showed an RPM of just $2.64. But Ouch. we can go lower still. Jack Craig has a football channel called Nutmeg that's showing an RPM of just... 50 cents. Ouch. <laughs> so are you a creator that puts profit before passion? There, is there it is, guys. There it is. So if you are passionate about something and you're not really caring about the money, then just do whatever it is that makes you happy. I couldn't recommend that more. But if you know you want to earn a living off this, just keep in mind that these are some of the general rules about niches and how they vary and how much they pay. Let's skip forward a few seconds here. And we're going to talk about some of the other niches that are low paying that you may want to not steer clear of, but just be aware of. And that means there's a lot of niches that you probably want to steer well clear of. Cooking channels, reaction channels, fitness and music are all low earners. A prank channel which may fall under entertainment and comedy, such as the Kaz Sawyer channel, reportedly earned just $1.61 from each 1,000 views, according to the Business Insider. All those prank channels? Yeah, I'm talking to you. They're not that funny, usually, and they get low views. So if you're going to, like, you know, go out and pester people <laughs> for views, keep in mind they don't pay all that much. So just a public service announcement there. So so there you go. Those are some of the lower-paying ones. Let's take a look at some of the higher-earning ones to wrap this up. What about the other end of the RPM spectrum? How much do high earners rake in every 1,000 views? Joshua Mayo, one of those fabled finance channels, has an average RPM of over $20 that even peaks Damn. up to $40 on certain days. This digital marketing channel reported an RPM of over $11. When you see this digital as 2 marketing. million views over a year, for $22,000, 
you start to see why certain creators made the decision to go into certain niches. Yep. Making money and digital marketing seem to be the most lucrative of niches. But what's this I see? Educational videos with an hey. average CPM of $9.89. But is this true? Well, luckily... And did you see what he did there? He just swapped out RPM for CPM. So keep that in mind. 989 CPM is not RPM. I don't know why they would he would do that, but he did it. So there you go, guys. Those are just some of the things you want to keep aware of. Uh, keep in mind, I make educational videos on my personal channel, and I can tell you right now that I make a, a, a fair bit of money making these types of teaching videos, and it's really, really good. So um, that's my two cents. Take a look. Let me know what you think, guys. Leave a comment. Got a lot more stuff coming up. Stay tuned.